Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well. Um, in this video, we're going to continue on what we've been doing in our previous one uh, in this series on uh, a recipe for extremely reproducible enrichment analysis. So just to catch you up on what this is about, this is a step-by-step -step protocol for how to undertake uh, an enrichment analysis using state-of-the-art tools in order to get completely reproducible results. So in the previous uh, video, what we did was to outline the steps that are involved in reproducing a uh, an analysis by someone else. And in this video today, we're going to start on how to set up something like this for your for yourself. <clears throat> so um, we're going to pick up from step number eight in our protocol. Uh, and this is going to be what today's video is all about, which is creating a GitHub repository uh, and getting that to be functionally working. So um, let's get stuck into it. Um, what I'm going to do is follow this step-by-step uh, -step protocol, and I'll have the various windows all working. So um, uh, if you're on a Linux machine, which you should be, because that's a requirement of this um, protocol. Um, uh, I'll just drop down into the uh, home directory and I will install git. I think that should be already yep, installed on this computer, so that's all fine. Um, so that's relatively straightforward. The next thing we need to do is to create an account for GitHub. So I've got this uh, page here. This is github.com. And what you'll need to do is sign up uh, with your email, uh, and then you'll be um, sent a message to validate that email, and then you'll have your um, uh, your GitHub homepage, and that will uh, get you through. And so that's relatively straightforward. So we can jump down to step 10 here and talk about this one. So this step here is to create um, or set up SSH keys for GitHub. So you might be wondering why you should do this um, instead of just using a regular password. And the fact is that um, SSH keys are in effect a type of password. It's just that they're very long, um, typically thousands of characters long. So those ones are kind of impossible to brute force. So they're considered to be much more, uh, much more secure than just a short, you know, ten character password. Uh, so in order to do this, uh, what we need to do is use the SSH key gen on our um, on our PC, um, and I might go back to that directory I was in and do SSH dash key gen. Um, and it's asking us, you know, what location do we want to add, add this? Um, I don't want to do this in the, the default one just for this computer here. I'm going to do it in the uh, current directory, which is um, home ssh slash test test um, slash r id underscore rsa now if you've already got ssh keys set up then um, you don't need to do this um, it might also ask you to enter a pass passphrase some people like to uh, add a passphrase for extra security but i'm going to leave it empty and uh, um, so this uh, here is the thing is the fingerprint for the uh, the key uh, and the random art. So these, um, you, if you like, you can, can store those for future reference, but don't have to do it this time. Uh, if, if you're on a fresh install of Linux and you don't have any um, uh, SSH keys set up and this is your first one, then you can just use the, the default location there. That's totally okay. All right, so the next step um, here is to, is to get familiar with the uh, public key. So um, when we run 
SSH key, Janet creates a public key uh, and a private key. And the private key, as the name suggests, is must be kept private and never shared. Um, and the public key, you can share that um, uh, on onto other computers, um, and that gives a method of authentication. So this whole text here would be considered the public key. And what we're going to do is uh, copy that and then go to uh, GitHub. Um, go to your account. Uh, we're going to go to settings and then go to, I think it's SSH keys. Um, and then we're going to click on a new key and then add that key by pasting in the public key. So that's the way that you would do it there. I'm not going to do anything here myself because I don't want to change any of my own settings. Right. So uh, let's say you've pasted, uh, you've followed the, the steps here and you've added the SSK, SSH key. What that will do is authorize the use of the the private key, which is this other file here, id underscore rsa. All right, so what's important is that you do not share that, that private key um, because then it's completely compromised if you do. All right, so let's say you've added that key and everything's working really well. You can return to your main page. Um, and uh, create a repository, you might have a button here, but for me, I've got to click on repositories and then add a, a new one. So uh, whenever we create a repository, it's really good to think about um, the the name carefully, make sure it's uh, something that means something to, to us. So uh, the purpose of this one is going to be to analyze the data set related to the set seven gene. Set seven, knockdown. Yeah, hey, D, that's fine. Um, so give it a, a good name um, and give it a description so that in the future you'll be able to understand what all that work is about. So um, analysis of uh, set seven knockdown RNA C data. Okay, so I give it a give it a thorough description. Um, you can make it public or private. In this case, I'm going to leave it public because it just makes it slightly easier to work with. Uh, I'm going to add a readme file. So. Um, this is kind of helpful to initiate this at the very start. I'm going to leave this alone with the git ignore. Um, I'm going to make a license. Uh, I just like using the MIT license, but you can use whichever of the other ones that you like. Um, and, or if you don't want to, if you want to um, ensure that no one else can kind of use your uh, code, then leave it without a license. So people will be able to see your code, but not uh, license to use it. So we'll create that repository. All right, so that's been set up um, and we can start working with it. Let's return back to our protocol. Uh, so we're kind of running through this. Um, then you'll be greeted with the repository page. Okay, then we can start working with the repository locally. That's great. So um, I'll return to my um, home directory. Um, and if I'm working in a fresh installation of uh, Linux, then I might want to create a projects directory, but I'm pretty sure this already exists. Whoops. Um, so what I'll do is just CD into my projects um, and then we can clone the repository and we've got some got some steps here in there. So I'll walk you through this process. Um, this is the, the repository as it looks on GitHub and we want to obtain the code 
and we want to choose the SSH option. Uh, we could also choose this one here, HTTPS, but that doesn't authenticate via the SSH keys that we've just set up. We've kind of spent time to do that. So let's grab this um, uh, SSH method. And what we're going to do is copy that and then return to our, um, our shell and then do git clone. And you can all see that at the bottom there, git clone. And then I'll paste in that address and it's going to clone it, which is just a kind of a, a copy or just kind of sync it up. So when I uh, CD into that folder, have a look, um, there's a license that we set up and also the read name. Oh, let's have a look at that read name. Uh, there it is. It's just two lines. That's all looking totally fine. So, um, We've done that, we've done the git clone. And okay, so the next step here is to um, to kind of give you an idea of how to modify things with Git and GitHub and get you used to that. And really the best way to do it is by by playing around with the, um, the readme maybe and adding some information in the readme and then um, pushing that to the GitHub uh, repo. All right, so I'm going to use Nano and make some edits to that uh, README. Um, there it is there. So uh, currently it just says analysis of set seven knockdown RNA seq data. I might want to add some information. So um, uh, yeah, data will be downloaded from NCBI Geo session, blah, blah, blah. and maybe there's a publication as well. Um, um, data, obtain, yeah. Um, data originally published by at oh, 2017, and then maybe that PubMed ID there. There we go. So that's a pretty good description of it. Um, and yeah, we can work on this later, but uh, I think we'll just leave it at this for now. So I'll close Nano. Um, I've used Control X to leave nano and then it asks to save i press y to save and then it asks the file name uh, and i'm going to keep that file name obviously and i'm going to press enter and that drops me back into my shell uh, so we've made some changes um, and so what i want to show you is that um, it's just the file that's changed but the you know the local um GitHub, Git repository is not, there's no changes yet. We have to do what's called a commit to update the local repository. And this um, GitHub repository on the web, it's also not changed. So um, we need to kind of propagate those changes first locally with what's called a commit and then push it to the, the web um, repository. So to do this, We'll type git add readme and git add is a, the way I like to think of it is like track changes. And this tells git which files to track. Um, so git add readme and then git commit. And we always have to provide a message with a commit. And this message should be something that uh, is meaningful. And then, you know, when you look at this commit message, you know, five years in the future, you'll understand why that was done. So uh, we're going to type something like add basic information about project, for example. Uh, and then we get the, the a summary of the changes made. We're in the changing one file for insertions, one deletion. I think I got rid of an empty line there. So that's all fine. Um, and now, um, uh, 
that change has been reflected locally on our local Git repo, but not the web version. So if I uh, refresh this, you can see we've still got the old one. In order to do to fix that situation, we have to do git push origin main. And that will, what it's going to do is use the SSH keys that we've set up to authenticate the push. And when we click on refresh here, we should have uh, that additional information provided there. All right, so that is um, that uh, how to do basic uh, Git. And yeah, the idea is if you're going to be working on the trunk like this, you just uh, Git add the files that you want to track, uh, Git commit and provide an informative commit message and then push them as well. So that's uh, all that I wanted to show you today, relatively quick one. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video where we talk about building a custom Docker image for the project.